Good morning. Welcome to our safety webinar for August 2019. My name is Fernando Maldonado. I am your HR business partner here at Sunrise Management, and I have Dustin Peake here with us. Dustin? Good morning, and welcome to August. We're definitely wrapping up summer. Um, it's been kind of mild but nice, uh, which leads me to believe we're going to have a late hot summer. So keep your ears and eyes out for it. It's been a fast year, and it's been a faster month for me. So I don't know about you, Dustin, but our topic for today is going to focus on the lone worker. What do we mean by the lone worker? Well, before we <coughs> talk about a lone worker, we want to define it, right? Um, it's whenever an employee is working alone, such as in a confined space or isolated location. So if we take a moment to look at the definition provided by OSHA, what does that really mean? What does that mean to you, Dustin? So I would say this is any time I don't have a teammate with me or I'm in a position where a teammate is far away. Uh, an example I would use is perhaps maybe on a Saturday when you have a leasing agent and just a technician and one is on the opposite side of the property. So this would be a good example of it. So, or here, um, maybe showing an apartment for a leasing agent while the technician is doing a work order. This would be another example of being in a lone worker situation. So in these situations, it's very important that we have a couple basic but very important procedures to allow us to make sure we're doing our best to ensure everybody is being safe. Yeah, I started to think about this a little bit further and I kind of went down, down the hierarchical uh, you know, um, pyramid in our company and, and I thought, well, who, who wouldn't be a loan worker or potentially be a loan worker? And I started thinking about the roles and, and our job titles and, um, you know, a regional could be a loan worker. So could a, re a resident manager working alone, a community manager staying late at the office, maybe closing up things, um, a leasing professional, like Dustin just said, showing an apartment, um, or maintenance technicians working alone. Um, even thinking about our roving department here at Small Properties, right? Most of our, our teams work alone and they're driving around to different properties and then just working independently. So when we think about who could potentially be a loan worker, it's practically anyone in our industry, in our property management industry, could be considered a loan worker at one point or another. Do you agree, Dustin? I would. I totally agree. Again, it's a situation where you don't have a team member close by. Um, we're, you know, you're, you're in a, maybe a unit or, as Fernando was saying, like a regional out on a property walk with a client or, um, like you'd say, it's the leasing agent or a technician, which happens a lot. Technicians are out there by themselves um, quite a bit working in individuals' homes. Yeah, and it, it might be difficult to picture now, but... Um, the more we think about it, uh, the more we realize anybody could have that potential of being a lone worker. But let's explore some of those duties or, or roles that maybe potentially you might find yourself in that you didn't consider, oh, I'm, I'm working alone right now. Um, there could be, you know, a higher risk uh, for my safety at this moment in time. Again, we said, you know, showing an apartment unit to a prospective resident, uh, resident managers working alone in the office, responding to maintenance calls something that we don't think about, right? Uh, roving leasing professionals and maintenance team, and even just distributing flyers or posting notices out on the property, right? That seems like a pretty simple job duty, but you may be out there by yourself and that notice may not have uh, positive information or information that our residents are gonna be too happy about. So think about, right, as you're posting notices, um, if somebody reads it and you're wor working alone, somebody might approach you and have an issue with your posting or the notice that's been left behind. So things to consider here. Um, and also working remotely. So some of us have the ability to work remotely for uh, one reason or the other. And, you know, you might be at home alone. And so there is a higher risk um, or exposure to those of us that work alone. And what is that higher risk, right? If there's an accident or an emergency, um, if there's a sudden illness, if you're feeling sick, uh, there's limited coverage for rest breaks if you are working a full shift um, alone or part of one and 
can't necessarily take a 10 minute break for um, due to business demands, um, or physical violence from the public and or outside intruders. Right, so we're going to talk about, you know, accidents can be simple of uh, rolling your ankle while you're walking and being stuck in an area. Um, you know, sudden Ill illnesses, we'll talk worst case scenarios, you talk about um, any kind of seizures or potential heart attacks and you're, you're, you're by yourself and unable to get buddy aid or make communication. Um, and, and then uh, we talked about kind of a basic need of just rest breaks. If you're the only person in the office and having to shut down the office uh, to take a break is, is what's needed sometimes, um, especially if you need to use the restroom. But it, it definitely adds to the stress level of trying to navigate limited coverage. Um, and then also the last one, physical violence. And people have a tendency to think, well, you know, my residents aren't violent. And um, that... That in itself, dealing with anything that's in, in regarding the public and humans has a slight chance of violence happening. It's um, something, if you look at statistics, it happens quite a bit on a global scale. It's also extremely present in the transient community. Um, I don't know if the other communities have to um, deal with transients uh, trespassing on their property, laying on the grass, sticking through their cans, you know, and then having to interact with said transients. Um, that that in, in itself can provide a huge um, increase in uh, physical violence uh, situations, especially if one is by themselves. So it's always good to go in teams or have, and we have procedures here, which we're going to talk about in this next slide, to deal with all this. You know, and, and we're talking about those times in where it's uh, required of the job, right, yes. to work alone, that it's not feasible to just bring somebody along or um, there may be an emergency at the property that you need to respond to and you just find yourself working alone. Uh, last month we spoke about communication being key, a key component of maintaining safety. And to add to that previous topic, you know, we strongly encourage people uh, to focus on the communication aspect when working alone, um, doing periodic checks, um, installing automatic warning devices or purchasing those, and we'll talk about a product here in a second. Uh, first aid kits in case you have a small cut or you need something that you can take care of yourself. Um, we don't want some a, a small little injury uh, that you can just you know put a band-aid on to faster and, and turn to something bigger. Uh, make sure you know your emergency numbers, um, whether it's having that 911 on speed dial or having uh, emergency contacts at the top of your list in case something happens that you can able able to reach them. A lot of phones now have the ability to save people, right, and make them your favorites. Or also they have like the voice activated feature where you can just call out somebody's name. And also just know the general location of your urgent care uh, facilities, especially for those uh, those uh, roving techs that may be working at different properties, right? If, if you experience an injury at one area um, and then you go to a different part of the city, then you want to know, you know where the urgent cares are around that. If you don't, um, an easy way to find out, you know, something that we promote heavily in our safety webinars is just to simply visit concentra.com and click on their locations tab. And the cool thing about um, that feature is that it just it's able to tell where you're located if you're using a cell phone and it'll give you um, the closest urgent care to your actual physical location rather than typing in you know your home address or the property address also the use of radios um, Dustin would you be able to give us some example as to the benefit of radios I know that maybe the orchard uses yeah we, radios are huge at our property we have 11 acres of, of land and we have a lot of situations where our, we're spread out and we're not working in teams um, and the radios are huge to call for um, backup or assistance or to let somebody know what's going on. Um, again, communication is, is our biggest thing. If somebody sees something or they're encountering somebody, um, it's a huge asset to be able to just click on a button and, and call in two to three guys to come to your assistance within the, you know, a couple minutes. Um, and this works uh, the same way with uh, like the office calling for assistance. Like if uh, say we have a leasing agent in there, the leasing agent can call and the technician can be there. If the, say if there's any uncomfortable feelings with any prospects 
or any situation, um, it's always good to communicate that you're uncomfortable and that you would like some support, and that's huge um, for safety. And then uh, the periodic check-ins are another great, great option, especially for individuals that are perhaps like working late. Say you're on an on-call thing and you go out late, um, maybe just to text, um, hey, I'm all done, uh, or what's going on. Or if, if it's not something you're comfortable with, to communicate with the supervisor and check in with them and say, hey, I got this going on, can you please advise? Um, the automatic warning devices are amazing. First aid and emergency numbers are awesome. Don't forget you also have the non-emergency police number, which you guys can reach out to and report stuff. So say you're there alone and you see the transient, you don't want to interact with them, you can call that non-emergency police number. And it might not get the response that you want, but at least you reported it and that does add up. Um, and now we're talking about some of our technology here. Yeah, um, you know, for our smart tool every month we present some item that, you know, the property may be able to purchase to, um, in, in relation to our topic. And since we're talking about loan workers, there's this service by Apartment Guardian that it, it's basically like a panic button, but rather than sending an SOS um, through an alarm system on that little button, it actually sends a signal and sends uh, text messages and might even place a phone call to the direct supervisor of that person or to the designated like emergency contact for that device. And they're able to click that. Uh, I, I think a good example of this would be like a leasing professional showing you a unit by themselves in where they have this clicker on hand. And if something feels wrong or, or, or doesn't feel safe, they can click this button and it'll send a you know mass communication to multiple people. We're not trying to push necessarily you know this device um, or are or, or telling you that you should you should buy it. You know, do your research. Uh, go to apartmentguardian.com and find out if this is something that may be a good thing for you. Partner with um, your regional manager to make those decisions. But there's tons of devices like that that offer this type of um, services. Yeah. And um, just look into it. It might be a good choice for some of us. It might not be such a good choice for others. So it might be an aesthetic reason. Say you don't want to take a radio with you on tour. It's too bulky. You're not able to carry it. This might fit well on the keychain. Um, the, the, the key thing we're here is to make sure that everybody has a way of communicating with the team when they're in a lone worker situation, I think is the biggest takeaway of this. So whether it's your cell phone, your radio, the apartment guardian, some of communicating that you need assistance and you need it now is huge. Yes, and to wrap up our topic about the loan worker, you know, I'm going to go back to the previous slide, and that is that communication is it's truly key. Um, if you are working alone frequently and you have some concerns, feel free to, uh, you know, send us an email at safety first at sunrise management or mgmt.com. Um, give us a call, talk to your manager about it, voice your concerns, and I'm sure that we can do something about, um, you know, reducing the risk of your exposure when working alone and, and setting a process in place. A topic that we want to revisit this month is updates, legal updates for California in the County of San Diego. And even though they currently only apply to parts of California and in San Diego, they may apply to your region in the near future. We see a trend, right, when uh, California usually puts something out in terms of a legal update, um, the, the neighboring states tend to catch on within, you know, a year or so. So th this may be coming your way. It, it might not, but it's important to share it here, uh, and I hope that you find it interesting. The first legal update um, is SB 969 Automatic Garage Door Openers. And this is a new California law that is taking effect, or it took effect July 1st of this year. Um, and that's for new garage door openers uh, to be installed. Um, they must have a battery backup. So you don't have to actually go through each garage door opener and install a battery backup, but if you are installing a new one, I would even go as far as if you are replacing an old one or anything to that effect, um, you must have a battery backup. And I would log that, right? And I would document that you have made those changes. We also, at the bottom of the slide, 
have some recommendations as to where you could get this part. The part number for the Sunrise pricing is 234. That may change, obviously, right? It may fluctuate, but if you go to HD Supply, you may find something uh, to that that will comply with this new uh, legal uh, requirement in California and at a fair price. And we also have a snapshot of the screen um, as to what the item may look like, um, how it may look like when you purchase it if you go online. The second update is for the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District, Rule 1206, and it deals with asbestos removal during renovation and demolition. Um, it, this virtually impacts all apartment complexes in San Diego County. It impacts all of our apartments here within our portfolios at Sunrise Management. Um, and there's some information here. And essentially, what it entails is that a facility survey must be conducted prior to renovation or demolition of 100 square feet or more in 365 days. I can't really visualize whether that's a lot or a, or a little because I don't work in that space. But Dustin, is 100 square feet a lot? So it, it can add up real quick if you're doing a rehab regarding, say, like a flood and you cut out two feet of drywall up the wall and you did it through the couple of bedrooms. That'll add up. You might get one or two jobs done before you'll need to get your survey done. Um, and I, I recommend you guys reach out to your regionals and communicate with them and get in contact with your guys' tester and you'll have a tester come out and that's the person conducting the survey. And they're just EPA certified and they're gonna run around and basically, I've done this before in a couple jobs. They're gonna come run around, scrape a couple samples here, there, they'll tag it all up with blue tape, take some pictures, and then they'll take it back to the lab and they'll give you a green light or a red light, like whether it's positive or negative. Um, and you'll be, you'll be surprised, a lot of stuff will come up negative and then you'll be surprised on what will be coming up positive. And you, you'll, you'll, you'll argue uh, the fact that it, if it's new, um, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, the United States is the only one who's really not using asbestos anymore, but yet we continue to purchase products from countries that use asbestos. So that's the method behind the madness. Uh, China's still using it, India's still using it, so and we're still buying products from said countries. So that is why we have to test the new equipment as well, or the new stuff. Yeah, very good point. This this new rule um, this, does not have any sort of variables related to how old something mm -hmm. is. So even if it's brand new, even if you just, the, the building was constructed yesterday, right? Yes. They still have to do that testing. Um, so something to consider, again, we want to promote communication. This, this takes, uh, th this requires a need for us to be proactive and communicate with our supervisors and, and come up with a plan if it's something that you foresee is going to affect your property at a, at a higher level. The last topic that I want to talk about as we are approaching the end of August, as I say that, uh, again, this month has gone very, very quickly. Um, but every year for the last, I think, four to five years, we've had open enrollments. Uh, from the 1st of September to the 15th of September. In the last three years, um, that open enrollment has taken place through ADP, and it has been a passive open enrollment. For those of you that have been with the company for the last three years, you know what that may mean. Um, it just means that if you don't want to make any changes to your benefits whatsoever, then you don't have to go into ADP and complete the benefits wizard. Um, if you like to keep your medical coverage or dental coverage or vision coverage or anything the same, you don't have to do anything other than potentially complete the wellness initiatives, uh, which includes the biometric screenings. We just sent an email out yesterday with tons of information uh, about open enrollment and on-site biometric screenings, trying to make it easy for you to complete those screenings if you need to. Uh, there is an asterisk there under complete wellness initiatives because um, like last year, this year, what we're doing is if you completed your wellness initiatives, the three, right? So the biometric screening, the health risk assessment, and the tobacco cessation program slash affidavit, um, on, Ju uh, on January 1st of this year or, or on, then you don't have to complete it again. So if you completed it last year for open enrollment, then you will have to complete all three again for this year. But if you did it at any time in this calendar year, you won't have to complete those three initiatives again to receive the wellness rate. If you'd like more information, um, you can definitely uh, 
go to that email that I sent. We'll send another reminder as well towards the tail end of the month. We're working on posting stuff on our intranet as well, so you should be able to see information there. And then starting September 1st, when you log in into ADP via a computer, you will see a pop-up with your uh, open enrollment benefits wizard. So you can definitely go through it, and there'll be documentation there with our new benefit summary guide and information regarding benefits. Anything to add, Dustin? Um, I, I, I hope you guys take your old paperwork if you're going to do the screening from last year. If you have it, bring it. That way you can compare numbers. Yeah. I've got mine sitting in my drawer. Just I like to see where I bounce off of from last year to see if I'm going up or down in the, the numbers game. Uh, that's about it I got on that. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you enjoy the rest of the month, and uh, we'll talk to you in about 30 days. Yeah, right. Everybody have a great one. Stay cool out there.